Hello, biology students. Today we're going to be talking about something that has to do with energy, specifically this weird thing called ATP. Let's get started. So before we really jump into the stuff about ATP, let's quickly review what we know about energy so far. Why do our cells need energy in the first place? We know it's the E in hog racer, but what's so important about energy? What do we use it for? Well, all types of living things need energy to be able to do work. Tons of types of work. Movement, thinking, all sorts of things. Catching food, even single-celled things do that. But where do we get our energy from? What do you think? Especially as humans, where does energy come from? Hmm. Energy comes from our food, right? So we eat food, and especially things like carbohydrates and lipids, we learned, are really high in energy or calories, and that's how we get our energy, because we're consumers. Interesting. Well, let's keep thinking about this stuff a little bit more. So before we really get into what this thing called ATP is, we need to understand what some sort of issue that would cause us to need this weird molecule called ATP. Well, the fact of the matter is our cells get a lot of energy from food, but can we use it all at once? No, we can't use it all at once. So let's think about us eating a big piece of pizza. Nom, 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 pizza, pizza, right? So we eat the pizza, we break it down in our digestive tract into its building blocks called monomers. Do I get all the energy? Can I use it all at once, probably? I'll probably be able to use some of it at once, but not all of it. I need somehow to be able to store some of it for a later time period. Well, luckily, the body has a molecule that's kind of like a battery that can store energy. And that molecule that's really good in our cells that stores extra energy is called ATP adenosine triphosphate. Try saying that three times fast. Well, where do we get the energy to make this? Well, we get it from our food building blocks. We know building blocks of food macromolecules are called monomers, and we're going to take those building blocks and we're going to convert them over into this molecule called ATP, which is going to be like our energy battery for the cell. Well, what types of things might I use it for? Well, in fact, all sorts of things. It's our major currency in the cell to do work. Pretty crazy, right? So think about this. You've never heard of this thing called ATP, most likely, but we're going to use it for almost every activity an organism does. For instance, big organisms like us weirdo humans, we run, we exercise, we move, right? All of those things are going to require the cell to get energy over a long period of time. Most of that energy was probably stored in the battery molecule called ATP. Whoa! Even when you're just thinking or moving your pencil, that thought process, right, as you're writing, those things need energy for your body to make all those thoughts. The energy is probably coming from the battery called ATP that's in almost all of your cells because it's the most commonly used form of energy in our body. Even when you're sleeping, right, your body's doing things specifically. You're breathing automatically. Your heart's beating automatically. You're still doing work. Work is these things, right? Thinking, breathing, heart beating. All those things require energy because they're work. And you know what? They're all using this currency, ATP. Let's then learn the details about ATP, okay? But before we do that, let's make sense of why we need it one more time. And we're going to use an analogy to do this. Could you really take a gold bar like this? Maybe a pirate would have it. R, right? That big gold bar. Could you buy a stick of gum at a dollar store with that? Yeah, no. Probably they'd want it, right? But really, could you buy something that cheap with it? No, right? Because is it a usable form at a dollar store? No, you probably need what at a dollar store? Dollars, right? Similarly, for our cell, we're going to get building blocks like sugar, which we know is glucose from our food. Is that a usable form of longer term energy for our body? No, we just learned it's not. We can't use it. We need to store the energy in something more like a battery. And that thing, again, is ATP. Super important. It is our longer-term storage or battery 
of energy for our cell. Let's learn about how it looks and how it works now. So we're going to do a diagram of ATP. It looks like so, where it has one adenosine, which you'll draw as a rectangle, and has three phosphates. Phosphates we'll call P's, right? They look like circular P's, right? And we can use a P for phosphate. And remember, the full word was adenosine triphosphate. Why three phosphates? Because of the tri in triphosphate. Do notice that the lines connecting these are all chemical bonds. This one's a normal one, but these squiggle ones we need to label as higher energy. And the reason they're higher energy are these are two negatives. Do negative things like to be near each other? No, they actually repel. So having them this close together takes a lot of energy to put these, these different phosphates so close together. They are actually want to explode out of here. Right? I like to think of this almost like a loaded Nerf gun, where these are the balls in the Nerf gun. All right? I even have an example of that in class I can show you. So make sure you drew that. So how do we get the energy out of ATP? Well, remember, these are waiting to explode off. So what's going to happen is an enzyme's going to poop, plop off, and cut off this bond on the last one. Remember, they just want to escape each other. And it's going to release that last phosphate. Whoosh! And when it releases it, right, it's like really making the Nerf gun release one of the, the Nerf balls. And that is going to release energy. Poop! release the energy. So how do we get the energy out of here? We release a phosphate. How cool is that? But can we call this adenosine triphosphate anymore? What do you think? Is it triphosphate? No. We have to call this something else for two phosphates. We're going to call it diphosphate, ADP, now that there's only two P's left. And because of the two P's, there's not as much energy left here because we released some of the energy off of this battery-like molecule. All right, now similarly, we might use the energy from food, okay, to add a new phosphate on an old ADP, two phosphate molecule, to make it go from two phosphates to now three phosphates. How do we add it? Well, we store energy from food and put it into the chemical bonds, right? Taking that extra phosphate, using our food energy to put it back on. Bloop. So which one has more chemical energy, do you think? The ATP or the ADP? Hmm. Which one has more chemical bonds? Hmm. Well, here's our answer. ATP has more stored energy than ADP because it has more of the high energy bonds. Okay? So when we want to release energy, bloop take off a phosphate. When we want to store energy, put on a phosphate back on. Great. We'll practice this in class. Where is all of this happening? All right. Well, this is all has to do with energy. So what organelle has to do with energy? You tell me. What's our powerhouse in the cell? Hmm. The mitochondria, of course. And what chemical reaction happens in a mitochondria, if you remember? Hmm. Cellular respiration, you're right. Don't forget mitochondria has those M folds. And really quick, one last thing. Let's write down this cellular respiration advanced equation. So we have glucose, C6H12, plus oxygen with an arrow. Here are our reactants going to products, carbon dioxide, water. And before we were just writing energy, but now we know. We have our chemical energy that's not able to all be used, and we're putting it into a usable stored form, that battery at the end here. Very good. Hey, guys, you made it. We'll practice this in class, but do notice, just like how we learned earlier in the year, this is very similar to photosynthesis, other than now we know that that energy is ATP, and it's flipped from photosynthesis because they're opposites. The products of one are the reactants of the other. Good job.